analysis on sprint mechanics. A little background, this is a former collegiate lacrosse player. She's the same subject I use for the landing mechanics. She does not have a ton of experience in sprint performance and sprint um, mechanics, but she does have more of an aerobic capacity. She's used to running long distances, so we can definitely use her as a great example of some things to improve on. So I'll play it full speed once and through. Go. So we can see immediately that she does not use a full um, stance to start with. She doesn't get in the low position that a sprint should be started in. Um, this is partly in my fault because I did not instruct her to get low, touch your arm to the ground, um, bend forward, put all your weight forward. Um, but it also leaves this area to improve. So if I would like to immediately hit on that, as an area to improve, that will probably add lots more, probably add another couple seconds on our sprint time, or decrease a couple seconds. So we can obviously break this up into the acceleration fee, um, phase, transition phase, and top speed. So okay, she has a very yeah. short acceleration speed phase. Let's see. So all that center of mass is aimed forward. This is her acceleration. Her transition starts about right here. And then when she gets into trunk extension, her top speed is achieved. So let's go back and look at her acceleration phase specifically and examine our stride frequency and stride length. Okay, so immediately we can see that her center of mass is completely far, which is good because that will help in her speed production. That's about her center of mass. So let's see. From her, her center of mass is basically right underneath her foot right there. So she, keep, so she starts off pretty good with keeping her foot close to her center of the mass. And then now we can look at her foot position and her ground contact. Okay, so we're going to look at her left foot right here. So we can see that she contacts the ground initially on her toes, moves her way back to her heels, and then pushes off on her toes. So let's also look at the stride length. So from the time that she gets off her right, and hits it. So I'd say it's about that long. Let's back it up a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, so that looks about good. Now we can get specific measurements on this and personalize it to her data and see how her stride length um, compares to normative values. But my guesses are that this is going to be relatively short compared to sprinters of, say, a collegiate level of her age. Next, I want to look at her hip rotation. So looking specifically at her hips from in her acceleration phase, we can see that she does a lot of hip rotation. I can look at this and tell just from, honestly, the way her shorts are moving. Let's look. So I can kind of tell that like the seams are rotating. If I were to look in a different view, we would probably see her hips initially internally rotating with along with the knee valgus and then starting to straighten out. So one of the goals that we looked at with Usain Bolt's video is the straightness of his path to begin with. Now with this one, with her case, it's hard to see exactly how straight she is, but she does have a lot of hip rotation. Now I'm looking at 
her torso to hip angle in her acceleration phase. So we can see that her torso is pretty upright, so she does not get a low acceleration, allowing her center of, ma center of mass to be driven forward at a really high rate. This is definitely going to slow her down overall. If she were to be able to actually get in those starting positions of starting out of the blocks and pushing her whole entire center of mass forward, then I think that that would help a lot on her taking off time on a 40 meter sprint. And then last, we can touch on her arms. So right here, her arms are pretty parallel to the ground. She does a good job with getting that arm swing up and using her arms to propel her forward. Again, her arms are pretty high right there. We did, I did just catch this. Her arms are completely bent on that one. Her right arm is bent. So we want to maximize that by keeping that as straight as possible. We can kind of see that a little more in her left as well. And then use those arms to propel us forward. Okay, so getting into her exercise programming, she obviously needs to work on her hip mobility and her hamstring strength to get that force propulsion up. So some RDLs and then hamstring series are really gonna help her out. Um, ham BOSU ball or um, plyometric bio ball, ham physio ball, I'm sorry, physio ball hamstring curls are one exercise that I've done and I've seen really great results. Um, bridges, clamshells, those kind of things in a hamstring series is gonna increase your hamstring strength and that will help her with her um, acceleration phase. I also looked at an article looking at the effects of a plyometric program on sprint performance. Um, they actually did a sprint-based plyometric program. The details were not quite as clear, um, so this would be hard to integrate, but it did have significant results in increasing um, or decreasing sprint time, increasing sprint performance. It did not have any significant results in decreasing or increasing stride, length and stride frequency. Um, but this is a really good start looking at plyometrics. I think I would do more research um, on the exact intervention that they use and then incorporate this into her acceleration progr program. Um, another thing that I saw while at track and field as my time and athletic training student was just accelerations are huge. So starting in that position and accelerating and then immediately slowing down. Um, that is something that they worked on. They were they did 10, 20, 40 meter accelerations. So this would be a really good starting point. And I think that these would all hit the areas of concern that we identified.